Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and weighing in at 146 and one half pounds. He comes to us tonight with a professional record unblemished by defeat. In 35 bouts, he has won 34 and has one disputed draw. 29 of those victories have come by knockout. He is a former world champion who surrendered his title for the opportunity to challenge the opponent he now faces across this ring. Ladies and gentlemen, from Accra, Ghana, Africa, here is the challenger, former WBA welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Ike Bazooka. And in the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing 147 pounds. In 1992, he captured Olympic gold. And since, he has captured four world titles in four weight divisions. With a perfect professional record consisting of 29 bouts, 29 victories with 24 knockouts. This evening, he steps into the ring to take on the most difficult challenge of his career but he takes this step with the courage and determination that has made him a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former junior lightweight champion, former lightweight champion, former super lightweight champion from East LA, the reigning and defending undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the golden boy. This is legal, this is low. That's low, that's legal, understand? This will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Test guns, good luck. Okay. In their great fights, Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns exceeded very high expectations. How say De La Hoya and Corte? If they give style points for relaxation coming into the ring, then Quarte is already the early leader. De La Hoya looks tense. Quarte looks eager. Round one begins with a Quarte jab and a Quarte left hook. Many believe that the first big question in the bout is what does De La Hoya do to nullify the Quarte jab? Now, George Foreman, you're in the minority who believe that it is not as heavy or effective a jab as is De La Hoya's. But as you look at Ike Quarte getting started here, talk about the bazooka jab and what it does for it. He's got a good left jab, but he still doesn't have the jab of the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. Oscar De La Hoya has this stiff left jab, and he keeps his hands up. He'll find that jab bumping into Oscar De La Hoya's gloves and elbows a lot of the night. When Oscar decides to land two or three good jabs, it can change the whole course of this fight. But you saw the most important punch that De La Hoya has thrown so far is trying to throw that right hand over the jab. He's, he's always been considered a left-handed fighter. And if Quarte's biggest weapon is his jab, De La Hoya's is his left hook to the body. He landed it twice in sequence just a moment ago. Now you see that jab of Oscar De La Hoya goes to the side of the face. And if he matches jab, jab after jab, he's got the reach advantage. His jab is supposed to reach target before I jab. Dropping right hand landed for Quarte, but it does look as though the early strategy for De La Hoya is to out-jab the jabber in effect. Well, he's forcing him to jab because Oscar doesn't see any openings right now. Quarte keeps his hands up real good. But you want to make sure whenever Quarte jab, you jab along with him. 
Watch every like time the left fight. jab goes out, yours should be going out too. Left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Duarte likes to keep his hands up in a piece of boot. Does that create an opening for De La Hoya to get to the rib cage with his left hand? Well, I don't think Oscar should go to the body this early in the fight because he is the tall of opponents. He's dropping his head down into some dangerous territory. You want to keep your head up as long as you can. Stand and utilize that height advantage. His head is up there away from Cortez's punches. Blood trickling from De La Hoya's nose. And that could be the product of the stiff jab with which Quarte has been rolling up the points so far in round number one. De La Hoya pounding to the body. Quarte blocking the left hook with his elbow. Blocks the right with his elbow there. And De La Hoya gets a right and a left through the guard. Quarte, normally a phenomenally fast starter, is forced to stand and watch as De La Hoya picks up the tempo here. Very, very intense action. He's allowed Oscar De La Hoya to punch him. You don't want to do that. Not a joke if the fight continues on for a couple of rounds. Whether correctly or incorrectly, if you believe what Quarte has said coming into the fight, he doesn't have a lot of respect for De La Hoya's power. Un poquito lateral, más laterales, side to side. Okay. A little bit more, side to side, and you're gonna be first with a jab. Stay, stay more busy with a jab. Okay. And keep, and keep him outside. Okay. Don't let him in. Keep him outside, side to side. And stay busy with a jab. Be watch more for jab. Okay, a jab. Yes, come look right at this. Can't tell one again. You're giving him too many chances. Like when I call, can't. Okay. Watch more for right. When you hit him, you step back. When you hit him, step back. Don't let him. Don't let him use his left tool. Okay. You gotta step back anytime you hit him. Okay. Don't let him get a chance. Those of you who speak a little God don't need Fred to call translation in that corner, but for the rest of us, Fred is the man. Jabs in round one by CompuBox numbers. De La Hoya, 10 out of 33. Duarte, 9 out of 32. A standoff. Now there's a piston-like jab from De La Hoya. His corner told him, go side to side. Extend his flat footy. They said, go side to side and stay busy with the jab. You know something? Communication sometimes is a big problem with fighters. You, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You get away with it. Sometimes Oscar is young and he's kind of rebellious. You want to tell him to do something in a real sweet fashion, so to speak. You used to bring in Angelo Dundee, who would have nothing to do with your training camp, but who came to the fight to communicate with you in the ring. That's right. You need communications in the ring. The biggest copy box news out of round one was that Quarte, throwing only 43 punches, to less than half his normal first round average. Usually that's because the other guy punches hard coming back. Both showing some respect for each other's punching ability. Oscar's also doing a lot of waiting, and this is not what you want to do. If a guy can punch, don't wait on him to hit you. Go on and hit him. As far as him being a tough opponent, every opponent is tough. What you a boxer for? You don't mind a guy being tough. De La Hoya backing up, making Quarte reach with his jab, hoping that Quarte will overcommit with the jab, and he can counter him with right hands, as Jose Luis Lopez effectively did in the late rounds of his battle with Quarte. And that's Oscar doing an excellent job of stepping back, moving around the ring, making this guy follow you, at the same time keeping your right hand up. If you can make him lean forward just a tiny fraction. That's right, just make him get overconfidence. And there it was. The right hand over the top of Quarte's left. Oscar want to go back into his position and don't get yourself out of position, reaching out at anything. Quarte is doing a good job of keeping this balance. Quarte wears what amounts to a confident grin on his face throughout the action. He's De La Hoya with a look of determined tenacity. He's doing a good job, but you don't want to get in a boxing match with Oscar De La Hoya, I'll tell you that. You want to go on and throw your jab, keep punching him at all times, but he's standing there watching Oscar De La Hoya. And one punch comes, the next thing you know, you're hit with five or six. Even Quarte's biggest supporters would agree, in most cases, that De La Hoya is the more flexible, more multi-talented boxer. 
Now, Delahaye was caught with a good right hand that time, but comes back with a left right left of his own. Quarte getting on a left to the body as Delahaye missed the right upstairs. Jumping right in hand inside by Quarte. Both fighters experiencing some moments in the closing seconds of round two. Let's take a look at the jab, and as you see, Delahoya coming over with a straight right. Never been his best punch. Threw that one perfectly without a lot of power. Okay, you gotta paint this guy, and you gotta have more lateral movement. The combination with which Jose Luis Lopez bedeviled Quarte in the late rounds of their fight, October of 97, was counter right across the top of Quarte's jab, left hook to the body. He landed it over and over and eventually put Quarte down with a right hand. Well, you notice Oscar's been so effective with his left jab that Quarte is not even trying to jab as much. Round number two, Quarte again threw sparingly, only 46 punches. Deloya threw more, 62, but Quarte landed at a much higher rate. But by the same token, George, Oscar is not throwing his left hook as much, and that's his big punch. Well, remember, Quarte is supposed to be this great jabber, and it is just not happening. You know why? Because Oscar matches jab for jab. Then when you take a guy's biggest weapon from him, then he turns ordinary and you try to attack him with your stuff. Yeah, but if he's taking the other guy's best weapon away, they've neutralized their best weapons and they have to show each other that they can beat each other with other stuff. And De La Hoya starting to get to Quarte with power punches in round three. Quarte grinning as if to say you didn't hurt me. Usually that means I'm a little bewildered that you're hitting me the way you are. That's what you're able to do. You jab, throw right hands, and then use your footwork to make the other guy miss you as he tries to pay you back. And when a guy, and I'm talking about the gold trunk quarte here, when a guy who normally throws 80 or 85 punches around is throwing 40, does that mean his confidence has dropped? Not at all. It's just a, a jab that Oscar De La Hoya has. It hurts you like a big punch. So you think before you do everything, and that's, that stops everything. If you think... Deloy with a quick left hook, partially blocked. Quarte starting to just paw with the jab. That is not the laser shot for which he's known. Counter right hand by Deloy as Quarte's jab slows down. Oscar getting the better of it now as we go into the last moment of round three. And this is the thing about Oscar. After every combination, he's back in position to do it again. Quarte throws a good left jab and a right hand, and he's always out of position. And his corner should tell him about being in position. De La Hoya clearly so focused on the counter right hand that if Quarte starts to get lazy with the jab, Oscar could have a right hand festival. Now Quarte goes back to throwing the thudding jab instead of just pawing with it. Now you know Gil Clancy's not going to let like Oscar De La Hoya laying his left hand down to his side there. And this is when you want someone like Gil Clancy out speaking. Taking charge, getting control here. But I think the plan is for only Robert Alcazar to talk to the fighter during the fight. You know, the good thing about Gil Clancy, he can see what is going on. Well, we'll watch to see if Clancy talks to Deloy. Deloy lands a hard counter right. Quarte comes back with a right and the left of his own. Quarte suckled him. Oh, this is something. Is good. Okay, put the pressure over here. Stick. Stick to what you're doing. One, two, three, one, two. 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 Also, you have to be very careful. He doesn't hit you with your with his left. Okay, stick to your jabs. You're doing good. This is obvi obviously what 
De La Hoya has been working on in preparation for this fight because we've never seen him do this as often. Throwing the right straight over the top. And he gets back in position. But at the end of that round, Forte buckles De La Hoya's knees. Ike Forte, a man who commonly throws 80 to 85 punches around, averaging 48 attempts per round here, as he shortens up his output to try to accommodate for De La Hoya and the firepower coming back. Harold, how'd you score the first three? Jim, I got it two rounds to one. 29, 28, Oscar De La Hoya. I gave Oscar rounds one and three. I think that when he opens up, he outpunches him and he hurts him. I, mean, I don't know, to me, he looks like a skinny little kid, but God God, the minute he opens up, he gets straight, and he whacks him. As far as Ike Corte goes, the snap is not really there. De La Hoya's head never went back once from the jab. I mean, if De La Hoya, if Corte does land the jab, Oscar usually either blocks it or it just doesn't seem to have an effect. Oscar keeps his distance. Forte should understand at least touch his toe or something before you jab. Don't just throw your jab out there. You gotta have something that you see. Otherwise, your jab will fall on his right hand all night. So do you think that so far, De La Hoya is winning the tactical battle, the mind game between the two fighters? Well, he's keeping his distance. You know, when you're an inch taller, use that inch. And that's what he's done so far. Forte is standing back, not moving his head shakes his fist before he does something. You want to be the champion of the world, you're going to have to get out there and mix it up and take it from him. But as De La Hoya flattens out, spreads his feet, and goes for more power on his connected punches, he brings himself down into Quarte's range. Yeah, because he, he wants to spring up with his hook. He understands that he gets power with springing with that hook. Tactical round four, they trade jabs. Eloya looking to find a way to shorten the distance between himself and Quarte, while at the same time nullifying Quarte's jab by staying away when the Ghanaian star wants to throw. Now, whenever Oscar decides to stop doing anything, Quarte starts with his jab again. Well, Oscar's got, when he's not moving around, do something. Eloya landing a little right as Quarte awkwardly stepped to the side. Now Oscar does something different. He stoops down and jabs up with me to the, to the shorter opponent. You notice when Oscar misses the jab or right hand. He gets right back into position. He doesn't try to follow the guy. Cote is moving around. Hasn't decided what kind of footwork he wants. Hasn't established any kind of tactics with his feet. And as round four comes to a close, the two fighters are getting better and better looks at one another because they are throwing fewer and fewer punches as time goes by. It's respect. Both have a lot of respect for each other. Both have them. Pensando, pensando, pensando. Okay, you gotta keep shaking one more. He only has the right hand. That's the only punch he's got. You gotta watch out for that right hand. And, and keep him outside. You gotta get a little busy Salina, with the Salina, hands Salina. You let them in the fight. Throw those combinations once in a while. They look great. Okay, you have to start crouching a little bit. Okay, and when you let out the jab, crouch out a little bit, okay, and step over the pressure. Don't give him a chance to do all these, all these things that he's doing at this point. And when you jab, stay on the left-hand side, okay? Conventional wisdom is that Corte cannot win a close decision in what amounts to Oscar De La Hoya's hometown. No matter how we score the fight, the benefit of the doubt in the close rounds may be going to De La Hoya. Oscar uh, Forte will have to open up. It's worth pointing out, though, that all three judges are from out of the United States, two from the United Kingdom, one from Japan, as they attempt to eliminate any implication of favoritism in the judging here. Now, Oscar has... Forte reaching out with paw and hooks rather than jabbing straight forward. Got his hand tucked to his side. And, the, and I'm telling you, Oscar can do a lot of things when his hands are in that position. And 
And incidentally, between rounds, you probably heard Gil Clancy leaning in over Delaoya's left shoulder and talking into his left ear. Throw more combinations, he said. They look beautiful. Every now and then, he said. Not constantly. Just throw them every now and then and let the guy know that you have something. Now, when you start throwing left hook wild like that, then you get out of rhythm. So you got to really contain yourself. Oscar. And Forte having to discipline himself to choose his shots correctly in a fight in which he's fighting at a much more measured pace than he's ever been accustomed to in his career. What Oscar is doing, using the middle of the ring. He's not interested in the ropes. He's not interested in anything but the middle of the ring. Do you see anything here so far, George, that indicates that that 16-month layoff is a big factor for him? It has nothing to do with it. He's found a guy who can jab with him, Forte has, and he's trying to find a way to do it. One thing about it, he's brave. He hasn't given up. He's just looking for another way. Now he's slapping with his left jab. You don't want to do that. That's when you can really get countered because it throws your body inwardly toward the pointing of your feet. Well, and the two times that Deloy has landed sharply with big right-hand counters, it was when Quarte got lazy with his jab, pawed with it, didn't bring it back in a hurry, dropped it down to his waist, and he's holding it down there now. Now, you see, Oscar has no respect for Quarte's right hand. He's only watching the left jab, which is good. The guy... You know, but... It... Nothing's happening in this round, basically. I don't see De La Hoya doing much. I see Corte doing most of the landing. Uh, not much is a lot for Oscar De La Hoya. Not much is a lot. Body punches inside. What do you mean by landing? that, George? What does that because mean? Because you don't want to get out there and take some chances with a guy whose only chance thus far is to win by knockout. You want to stay positioned. Don't take any risk. Jab him because if the whole world of the city has a good jab. So I'll jab him. The crowd will applaud. You in your, you got your hometown. Well, maybe he uh, maybe he improves his chances to win by decision in this round because I tend to agree with Larry. Quarte has controlled the activity here, and I'd be hard pressed to see how a judge could give this round to Oscar. When you get into the rows. You, you gotta do something. Oscar, Oscar. You had to make some more steps, right to side. Get from here. I move your hands. Occupado. Get time. Put them together. Remember, stand to the back. Okay. Stop, stop, stop it back, okay? Okay, anytime you hit him, just. Follow him, wherever he goes, just follow him. Yes, keep, keep jabbing. Wait, if you decide to come back, keep jabbing when you start coming back. You gotta be first, maintain him on the outside. And the, be careful with that right hand. Round six of a schedule 12. Oscar starts off with a stiff jab. And down goes Corte on a classic Deloria left hook. It was because of that, the way it dismantles you, that stiff jab of Oscar Deloria. Remember, the left hook was just part of it. Corte was down twice against Lopez. One of them was a flash, but the second one was on a hard punch like that. Oscar should suppose now that this was done because of the effectiveness of the left jab, not because of that, the right punch. Don't. Go back to what you were doing. Don't get over anxious and start reaching. Right hand retaliation for Guarte. De La Hoya begins to open up and trade, taking chances. Not necessary for Oscar. Not necessary at all. He must believe he has the Ghanaian star hurt enough to contemplate finishing it. Down goes De La Hoya on a left hand counter by Guarte. It was because he got a little closer and he tried the uppercut too early. Now you got the makings of a classic. And now it's Corte who thinks he can finish. Hard to the body, hard to the body. And Halpern warns him that he must follow his instructions. And Halpern gives De La Hoya a chance to recover. Both men have been down in the sixth round. For real knockdowns on hard punches. Alfred
Auburn deducted no points. That was just a warning to Quarte. Oscar starting to open up with the, the left uppercut, which is not a good idea yet. And Quarte starting to come back with his jab. Oscar's going to have to go back to his left jab, take control of the fight again. If not, it's just going to get rougher and rougher. Another plus right hand cross for Quarte, and De La Hoya bustled for a moment, but didn't go down. Now we see this famous jab that Quarte was talking about. It was in the sixth round of the Leonard Hurst classic fight that the fight broke out. In the sixth round of this fight, the fight has broken out. It's on now, baby. It's it up, is on. It's up to the corners now to get Oscar back in control. This is when you need someone to communicate, communicate with you. Because the more he brawls, the more chances he gives to Quarte. Hard left hook upstairs for Deloya. Quarte grins. That means he was hurt. Now the jab is back for Oscar. Keep it up. Let him smile, but get your point. And Quarte has got to make sure he gets into the body of Oscar so he doesn't have any strength in that left jab. Another right cross for Quarte, and Deloya's left eye has begun to swell. What a round. They get the face for Okay, don't forget, okay? All right, first we're going to watch as Corte goes down. He was a little off balance after taking a right hand. He comes in close, catches the left, doesn't appear to be hurt. Later, a perfect left hand drops De La Hoya on the seat of his pants. Wasn't so much power, but right on the point. Witness the punch you don't see coming. Crowd cheers as we get past the midpoint of the fight. Harold Ludeman, how do you have it halfway through? Chip. Mitch Alfred wants the Vaseline off of Deloya's face. Too much grease. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, go! <laughs> that was very funny because the guy didn't take any grease off his face. He rubbed his head. Brilliant. If Robert Alcazar got away without taking grease off his face, that's a heck of a move by the oh, trainer. I mean, that was great. Now, that's the first experienced thing I've seen Alcazar do. All right, quickly, Harold, how do you have it? Jim, three rounds apiece, 57-57. But round six, definitely to Ike Corte, because even though they traded knockdowns, Corte certainly finished off. And look at the swelling under De Hoya's left eye. I have it four rounds for two for Corte. Corte's right hand became a factor in the bout in that last round. All he has to do is stand on his, watch the pivot, make sure your pivot is your left, your right foot, and keep that jab out there. We can also remember that in that great classic fight, that it was Leonard's eye that also started to close up in the middle of the fight. His left eye from Tommy Hearns, great right hand. Now remember, Quarte has a history of tiring in the late round. But he's tired in the late rounds of fights where he's been throwing 70, 80, 90 punches in the early rounds. That hasn't been the case here. Awful conservative. At the same time, he's not waiting in. He has a lot of respect for the power of Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar's doing a good job with the jab. Forte is smelling blood. He's like a tiger got loose there. Everything is jumping up. He's jumping up on his jab. He jumps up on his right hand. Everything is jump, jump. Fascinating, and what a testimony to the brilliance of their work habits that both of these great fighters, at the height of their careers, have introduced new elements into their game, and successfully so, for this fight. You're right, Jim. Forte is showing more versatility in his boxing ability, and De La Hoya is using the right hand. That's right. Whenever Oscar decides to throw a jab, whether it's hard or not, Forte does nothing. 
Now he's relaxed. He's got his elbows in. Quarte has, and he's intending to jab some now. But now that Quarte made his right hand a factor in the bout in the last round, De La Hoya is much more reluctant to throw the jab. Yeah, but he's gotten relaxed. Now. He's got his elbows closed, and he feels like he can do whatever he wants to do now. I don't see De La Hoya landing much at all. Hard right cross for Quarte. De La Hoya wobbles again. Oscar trying to come back with the left hook. Quarte looking for a shot. Like you're stuck in mud. You got this legs, use them. You have better legs than the other guy. Use them. You got to be first. You got to be first out there. When you set him up, let that combination he covers up. You need to get some distance. Okay. Okay. You're doing very well now. I'm very proud of you. Okay. Now, when you, when you jab, I want you to step to the side, okay? Don't give him the full body. Don't give him the full body. Just step to the side, okay? End of the round. Corte with a nice combination. Probably won the round for him. You heard in the corner of Good Francis saying to De La Hoya, you're fighting like you're stuck in the mud. You've got better legs than him. Use them. That's right. And De La Hoya begins to bounce. And you've always said, George, he's most dangerous offensively when he gets up and bounces like this. You get a little bounce in his legs, he's going to do something to you. He, he works off the bounce. It gives him the rhythm to fire his power punches. Now he goes back into the mud, as Gil would say again. Keep your feet moving. If you're in condition, why not move them? you got nothing to prove. You can box. Between rounds, to my eyes at least, De La Hoya wore a discouraged look on his face. Quarte always looks the same, even when he's down on the campus. De La Hoya unwilling to commit to the left. So many right hands have been coming back. Yeah, he doesn't want to reach out at this point because he's been told, and that's why he's reluctant. Let the fight come to you. His right, or his left eye is swelling. Quarte's targeting, looking for chances to fire the right hand again. Illoria reluctant to use his left. And a hard right hand again. Now the left hand of Quarte is making some points here. Left with it. He's got his confidence in all angles now. Uppercut from Quarte. The punch he doesn't throw all that often. Trying to put the right cross through the guard. De La Hoya not coming back. Quarte is creating the impression that he is starting to dominate De La Hoya. De La Hoya has to do something quick to change that. In and he lands a right hand that changes the bout momentarily. And the left hook. This boy's been in the Olympics. He's been in a lot of title matches. He's not going to fold. If you're going to whip him, you're going to have to whip him good. He's not going to fold under trying to discourage him with your smiles and this, those kind of things. No question, George. And, and when he's been in trouble in big fights, he has always come out, particularly in the 12th round, and closed the show. Did it against John John Molina. Did it against Pernell Whitaker. You have to look for him to reach down deep and try to do it again here. The mistake Oscar's making, he's not moving his feet. First two rounds, he kept his feet, making certain that his jab, he would be out of the range of Forte's jab. Well, you fight the way you train. And there were rumors that Delaware's training camp was not great. But he says it was fine, and right now his left hook is coming back to life. combinations to the body, the flashy ones that you use with, no, your, with his mitts. Give me, give me two, two punches, okay? Combinations. Papa, juntale dos golpes. Give me two punches, Papa. Give me the jab, and right after the jab, give me the two, two punches. 
And you have when, when he starts letting you follow you, he starts picking up confidence. Don't let him get any confidence. Follow him when every time you hear him. Jab him, follow him. Wherever he goes, follow him. Put a pressure on him. Okay? No, I need trouble. Take it down. All right, watch out. Come on. Take it down. Round nine of a scheduled 12. There have been two knockdowns. Both men were on the canvas in the sixth round. First, Quarte went down, and then as the De La Hoya contingent celebrated, De La Hoya was planted on the seat of his pants by Quarte. Now De La Hoya goes jabbing to the body. He's hitting him in the chest with a left jab, which is what you want. The fight goes on, you hit a guy straight in the chest, he loses a lot of his power and all of that quick left hand and right hand stuff. And as Quarte has limited his jab output, De La Hoya has gotten fewer and fewer chances to counter with the right hand. That was a big part of his fight plan, so he has to improvise something to replace it. Yeah, but uh, Oscar De La Hoya should be standing just a bit taller. Going to the body and the uppercut's landed. He got two left uppercuts through the guard. That's what you want to do. After you do it, step back down on your gun and make him come to you for some more. Don't go reaching after him. Corte is very smart. Keeps his balance. He, his corner told him to follow him around, but he's, he, he's a little smarter than that. And Corte hungering for the chance to land one more big right hand. Those body shots are more important than the head shots right now that De La Hoya lands. Zuka Quarte begins to fire the jab in multiple numbers again. De La Hoya cannot afford to just stand there and watch Quarte dead. Yeah, he's trying to wait his time on right hand, but this guy's jab is so quick, he knows so much about what he's doing, you won't be able to just time an overhand right on top of his jab. You might as well just get started yourself. This round has been all Quarte's jabs, with the exception of the two little De La Hoya flurries, one of them keyed by the uppercuts. Whenever De La Hoya throws a right hand, pretty much lands it whenever he wants. Right hand landed for Quarte, flush on the chin of De La Hoya. That was a killer right hand. De La Hoya took it very well. And lands a right hand of his own. Oscar De La Hoya is taking the challenge. He's not fighting like a champion, he's fighting like a challenger. I mean, he wants it. He wants this win. It may cost a few bruises, but you just got to go get it. Courage, composure, dedication, class on the part of two tremendous welterweight fighters. What a show. Forte a hard right hand by Corte. And De La Hoya does not move his feet afterwards. And another right hand lands for Corte. And going into the last three rounds, Oscar De La Hoya is in trouble. Oscar, tus golpes están muy por fuera. Recórtalos en 45. Sigue trabajando los uppers. The uppers are working beautiful. Oscar, you, you, the, the, hooks, the hooks are too wide, Oscar. You can't throw one combination yeah. to be satisfied. You got to come back. Show the judges you want to win the round. Hey, Oscar. Yeah. Well, is a very straight puncher, showing straight uppercuts. But late in the round, he saw that big right hand. And if there is any question about Oscar De La Hoya's will to win, taking that right hand was as clear a demonstration as you could get. De La Hoya is showing courage and willpower beyond any ever displayed in his career. The but courage you know, and willpower don't win fights if you don't land the big punch. Bill Clancy said a very interesting thing in the corner. It's something we've alluded to here which is you've got to show the judges you're trying to win the round. For two, for long portions of the round, Oscar hasn't been punching. There he does. He wobbles Corte with another counter left. And this time, Corte regains his balance. 
Hostler just has just got to be himself. All of the strategy stuff is already gone. Now throw it out the window and be yourself. Because time is running out. Yeah, Aaron be yourself. Lederman, how do you have it through now? Jim, 87, 84, six rounds to three. I caught day. I got I caught day with a five rounds in a row. I just don't think Oscar De La Hoya is doing enough to win these rounds. And I caught day is the best of aggressor. Then the more clean punches, he's coming forward. I mean, and good defense. Back to the story. One thing I gotta mention, I caught that is measuring him for two rounds. He leaves that left hand out there just like Lennox Lewis. Mitch Halpern's letting him get away with it, but he's gotta keep the glove closed in order to measure Oscar De La Hoya. If he opens it, it's illegal. Duarte knocked out for Santo Espana in the 11th round in 1984. That's his late round knockout earlier in his career. Oscar De La Hoya knocked out Jimmy Vidal in the 10th round in 1994. Neither has ever had a 12th round knockout. Deloya trying to scratch out the beginning of some kind of a rally here in the round 10. And he can do it if he just continues to believe in his left jab. Whenever he throws combinations after the left jab, Corte is there. But when he does not, he misses. And we talked about role reversal. Remember Ray Leonard becoming the puncher to beat Tommy Hearns when Hearns had taken over the role of the boxer. So now. As De La Hoya tries to work with his left hand, it's Duarte who's looking to counter over the top with his right. Cortez's eyes are wide open. He hasn't lost anything. He's physically strong. He's ready for whatever amount of rounds that may pop up. He's in shape. Hard left hook for De La Hoya. That's what Oscar De La Hoya does. He shouldn't be holding back, trying to be something that training camps have molded you into. more effort here and might be able to squeeze the round out. Yep. Good left hook by left Oscar Deloy. Maybe Deloy is doing enough to, as Gil Clancy said, show the judges who want to win the round. But the situation remains typical. And with two rounds to go, Oscar Deloy badly needs to produce the six most spirited fighting minutes of his life. Okay, you get a lateral movement and, and, and be careful with his right hand. And don't let him out jab you. We only got two rounds to go. 11 and 12 and that's it. Just rest and relax. Two more rounds, Oscar. Come on. We need those, those rounds from the back. I, I don't want you to jab. I, I don't want you to launch when you jab, okay? I mean, put a lot of pressure on him, okay? All right, don't let him follow you. Once he starts following, he picks up confidence, okay? And then he starts landing all these kind of combinations, so be very careful. All right, just get in and out, get in and out. Oh, that's all you gotta do. De La Hoya angrily getting up from his stool, and you heard Ike Cortez's trainer telling me he didn't want him to jab. No jabs in the last two rounds. Obviously, he doesn't want De La Hoya to get a chance to counter with a right hand that can change the fight. They must believe in Cortez's corner that he's well ahead. I don't see that at all. And I, and I think they'd make a sad mistake to assume anything like that here in Las Vegas. I don't care who the judges are. Well, and I, was, I don't think Cortez is going to listen to him either. How can you tell a fighter like that not to go in and jab? It's the reflex his whole career has been built on. All night, Oscar's been waiting to go over top of that right, that left jab of Cortez. All night he's waited. You have to just start saying, forget, I'm not going to wait, I'm going to do it. Oscar hurt his right hand that time on the elbow of Cortez. He's got to attack. And he's got to attack with the left hand, which has been his bread and butter throughout his career. Oscar De La Hoya, if he's going to go down, has got to go down using the left hook. Yeah, but his jab is doing a lot of good power things there. I like that jab of Oscar De La Hoya. He's using his footwork now, bouncing. Let me tell you, if you rush in now, Corte is so relaxed. It should have come a point where he was, was not so relaxed to start to charge a bit more. And Corte has shown no sign of tiring here. 
after a career marked by fatigue in the late rounds. He measured himself carefully in the early rounds tonight and has brought plenty to the table in round 11. You know, the style of Oscar's face is swollen. Forte is not taking advantage of moving over on that side at all. When you see some swelling, go over on that side and start picking your fight up. You don't need to be on his left side. Put your left foot on the other side of his left foot and stay over there fighting. Well, what about the fact, though, that that's Delaware's strong side? I mean, he has no strong side when he can't see. Believe me, when your eyes are swollen like that, there's a vision problem here. You're supposed to just put your left foot on the, on the, on the opposite side of his left foot and fight him from there all night. This is the way Delaoya's right eyes swelled in the closing rounds against Miguel Angel Gonzalez. But that was a fight in which he was well ahead and comfortably headed toward victory. Delahoya is a different story. Delahoya is doing very little in this round. And so his, first, his first flurry with 30 seconds left. Forte continues to grin in there like a man who thinks he is headed to the bank. Well, he's grinning, but he's not throwing a lot of punches after him. After every combination, Forte throws three jabs. Three minutes to go. And as he goes back to the corner, Delahoya shook his head. Beat them hands. Beat them hands. Come on. Take them in the legs. Beat them hands. Wipe them off. No me tires a pelear en este round. Es el último. Okay, I'm good. This is the last round. I don't want you to blow it. Vamos agarrando este round. We got to get this round. Lo viste, viste. You got to be busy. Don't, don't let them out busy you. You got to show the judges this round. Go ahead and chance cry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the last round. Don't give him any chance. You control the fight. This is the last round, okay? Just control it. Beat him. That's all you need to do. Okay. Okay. Keep on hands up. Please be careful of that right hand. That's all he's got and he's been infected. It's the last round. Don't blow the fight now. Oscar De La Hoya has a history, both as an amateur and a professional of fighting great closing rounds when he needs them. Never in his long career has he more badly needed a great closing round than right now. Well, Oscar's brave. He is brave. Oscar De La Hoya is a brave man. He's and brave. And with the left hook, if you're going to lose, lose using the left hook. And he did it. He has shown that he is the bravest fighter in the ring tonight. Crowd trying to lift their man. Suarte holding on. Remember Lennon Hearns? Remember Tommy Hearns leading in the fight? Straight across the rope in the 14th round. Mitch Halpern looking on. Halpern's close. He's close. What a brave man Oscar De La Hoya is. Halpern's going to stop it out there. He's brave.
The great Joe Russell once said that sport was a combination of art and war. We are seeing it right here. And before we hear the judges' scores, if that's the way it's going to be, there's a rematch clause in the contract. Let's see it. And I would say that, Jim, no matter who wins this Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who wins the fight. Let's see it again. Irresistible stuff. De La Hoya never producing that last flurry that we might have expected in the closing minutes of the fight. Here comes the bell. I had Ike Corte winning the fight. Let's see how that last round influences the final result. I saw the fight Oscar De La Hoya's left gap winning that boxing match hands down. After every three good shots of De La Hoya, Corte would land one. And, and I think, incidentally, with you guys having said that, unless I miss my guess, Harold Letterman has an even scorecard over there at the far end of the table. Congratulations. Excellent. We'll get to it in a minute, Harold. We'll get to it in a minute. Maybe I'm wrong. Copy box numbers in round number 12 of valiant Oscar De La Hoya landed 41 of 69, including that left hook in the opening seconds of the round that put Quarte down. Second knockdown of the fight for De La Hoya. And, and I'll add this. This is the kind of fight that helps Oscar De La Hoya, even if he should lose it. Showing the kind of courage he did to come down. Now here's the flurry during which Mitch Halpern watched but never decided to stop the fight. And he was right because Corte is returning fire. He's staying in the fight. He has earned the right to go on. He is not out on his feet. And, and in another few seconds, De La Hoya will have punched himself out. Yeah, but you don't want to get punched out by taking that many shots just by Corte. What a night. So how will the judges punctuate the drama? Well, here's a preview. Harold Letterman's scorecard. How'd you have it, Harold? Jim, 114, 113. I caught save. Seven rounds to five. Jim, I thought Oscar needed three points to even it out. I would have given him two. Great job by Mitch Halper not stopping it. I'll tell you, it was a heck of a fight. Very close. I just thought I caught a had too big a lead going into the last round, and I just don't think Oscar did enough to pull it out. And Michael Buffer has the official decision. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the Budweiser scorecards, how about a round of applause for the best welterweight fight seen in Las Vegas since Hearns and Leonard. We now go to the Budweiser scorecards. Larry O'Connell scores the bout 115 to 114. He scores it for Corte. John Keane scores the bell. 116 to 113. He has it for De La Hoya. Ken Marita scores the bell. 116 to 112 for the winner by split decision. And still the undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world. The Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. A split decision victory for De La Hoya. We'll have more on the judges' scorecards in just a moment. But right now, let's look back at highlights of this brilliant, brilliant 147-pound war. The action heated up in round number six, when first, Quarte went down on a classic left hook by De La Hoya. And then moments later, as De La Hoya tried to press what he believed was his advantage, Quarte with a counter left of his own, and Oscar was down. In the next few rounds, Quarte was able to seemingly take the lead in the fight with his big right hand that forced swelling in Oscar De La Hoya's left eye and twice wobbled the champion. 
But then in the 12th round, high drama, as a De La Hoya seemingly desperately in need of a knockout, fired that left hook to open the round and put Duarte on the seat of his pants. And then, shades of 17 and a half years ago, like Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns, De La Hoya pressed Duarte against the ropes and pounded and pounded and waited to see if referee Mitch Halpern would step in to stop the fight and give him the victory. But Halpern, correctly noting that Duarte was throwing back the whole time, never did so. As it turns out, it was okay for Oscar anyway, as he gets the split decision. And amazingly, amazingly to me at least, Oscar De La Hoya on the cards of the two judges who scored the bout for him, John Keane and Ken Morita, did not need that big 12th round rally to win the fight. If he only wins the 12th round 10-9, or even if the round is even, he still wins the fight on the cards of Keane and Morita. Astonishing. And right now, Larry Merchant is with the winner and still unbeaten, Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, Oscar, congratulations. You asked for a dangerous fight. You got one. <laughs> oh, well, I called it from the beginning. I mean, this guy's a very uh, good warrior. I mean, I give him all the credit in the world because I gave him some punches the last round that he wouldn't go down. What surprised you about him? Was it his ability to box better than you thought? Tell us. I think I underestimated his boxing ability. Um, when I would try to rush him, I thought he would stay forward and fight me, but um, he did move some uh, lateral movements, some waist movements. He's a very good fighter. I give him a lot of credit. All right, in this in this sixth round, you knocked him down. It appeared you were coming on. Did you get a little anxious and walk into a punch? Oh, um, I got a little anxious. Yes, I mean this guy. Uh, this guy was a very dangerous fighter. I mean, uh, I was looking for his left jab, his left hook. Came back with the right hand and then caught me clean. And uh, before we finish, Larry, un saludo a todos. Gracias por todo el apoyo. A Ignacio Ramirez, a Durango, a todos mis paisas. Gracias por todo el apoyo. Big Bear, a todos en. In Cabo San Lucas, un saludo, un beso, un abrazo. All right, now provide your own translation. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I just want to thank everybody out there, and uh, thank you for all the support, and uh, happy Valentine's. In the second half of the fight, for long spells, Oscar, you weren't doing much. You were going after him, going after him. In your corner, they were urging you to do something, yep. at least to impress the judges. Right. Well, what happened there? Um, I was a little worried of his uh, punching power. This guy uh, is a very powerful hitter, and um, I know I have to... Uh, it's a big learning lesson because I have to train harder, be more prepared, be aware, not, not, never underestimate my opponents. And uh, this guy's a very tough, tough, worthy opponent. When you went out for the last round, did you think you had to do something dramatic to win the fight? Not dramatic because uh, I knew all along that he was, uh, nobody was really putting the pressure. Um, I was finishing the rounds pretty good. Um, he wasn't uh, connecting me with the goals, those good jabs that he has, but uh, it was just... Uh, a very uh, it's, it's, intimidating fight for me. But you certainly understood or, or conveyed the idea that there was some great urgency when you out, went out in the 12th oh, round. of course. For the people, for the fans, for the public. They want to see good action-packed fights. I gave it to him the last round. I dropped him. I almost knocked him out. I had him. Oh, my gosh. I'm very did you get arm myself. Did you get arm weary? Because he, he was hurt, obviously, but he stood in with you, kept throwing punches. No, this guy can take a punch. This guy's a, a real strong hitter, can take a punch, and I give him all the credit in the world. Finally, this. There's a rematch clause in your contract in case he won. But this was such a great fight, and so many people got pleasure out of it. Do you want to give the public a rematch of this fight? I don't know. You think it was a great fight, Larry? I don't think so. I don't really think so. There's better and bigger, better fights out there for me. I know that. More exciting fights that the people want to watch. Basically, you're saying you don't want to fight him again. I'll fight him any time. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the contract is uh, is good, the date, the, the weight, everything, that people want to watch it again. Uh, I think people want to watch more exciting fights. Uh, I Corte, uh, uh, sometimes he did fight, sometimes he didn't. But, uh, hey, that's his style. That's my style. And uh, we gave you this fight tonight. Thank you very much for an outstanding fight, Oscar De La Hoya. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. Let's quickly take a look at final punch stat numbers, and you can see that they're close. Uh, De La Hoya landing five more punches than Quarte. Quarte throwing 57 more. Overall, higher connect percentage for De La Hoya, who was more measured in his output. Jabs, and one of the stories of the bout, is that De La Hoya accomplished the uh, seemingly difficult task of neutralizing Quarte's jab, landing almost as many, 
throwing 120 less, but reducing Quarte's connect percentage to 29%. And in various of his fights against good fighters, Hack Quarte has been given credit for landing more than half his jabs. But what did Quarte do tonight? He turned the tables and landed almost half his power punches, 115 out of 273. And his counter right hand and right cross were factors in the fight. Let's go back to Larry Merchant with the man who lost the split decision, Ike Quarte. Thank you, Jim, once again. Ike, did the fight go as you planned until the last round? Yeah, that's what I planned. You know, I planned to abort him. You know, I'm trying to abort him. I don't, you know, I know, I know what he's got to, coming to do, so we have our strategy. Yeah. So you plan to outbox him and surprise him in that way? That's what I think I'm coming to fight. You know, everybody knows I'm strong, so, I, you know, I always come to fight. But I always want to surprise him. Was he stronger or quicker with his left hook than you anticipated because it was the left hook that knocked you down twice? Not at all. I also knocked him down with my left hook. So he's not strong, not smart, not the other nothing. He knew who I am. Everybody saw part of this fight. No one. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy my kids are here. All the guys are watching this fight because I knew this is going to happen as well. Are you saying you didn't think that you, or that you thought it would be very difficult for you to win a decision? here in Las Vegas? Yeah, I know, I know. I brought, I brought my own judges in the, in the ring. I don't, I don't expect any judge. You know, I know in Las Vegas, if I don't think I don't think I go this time, I don't give a fight to him. That's what happened. You saw the fight. Everybody saw the fight in the world. If you thought that you had to win the fight by stopping him, why didn't you get more aggressive in the late rounds? Yeah, you know, he's, he's a champion. I respect him as a champion. You don't have to respect, you know, uh, put pressure on him because you have to respect him and fight him and knock him out easily. So you're saying you respected him and so therefore, you didn't attack him as hard as you might have otherwise. No, I, I, I shouldn't have to attack him because, you know, uh, that's not a problem, you know. I, I know what I'm coming to do, so there's no way to go and put pressure on him to knock him out. But I know, but later on, I'll do what I got to do. Are you, give us your feelings about the decision in this fight. Well, you saw the fight. I'm happy my kids, my kids are here. You know, everybody saw the fight in the world. I'm happy Ghana saw the fight because I knew this would happen in Las Vegas, you know. Well, it was a bad decision. You saw, you saw it. You were here, right here. I was, and I'm glad you were here as well, Ike Corte. Jim? Now you know, you know how you know. All right, thank you very much, Larry. First of all, George, Oscar says he doesn't think it was a great fight. You think it was a great fight? You know, Corte should have and could have done a lot more. There were a lot of minutes that went by that were bored of anything. You're going to take a champion's title, you cannot afford that boredness. It was exciting because we expected a lot. But when you think about it, the fight, the spurts were in between and far and in between, so to speak. There wasn't a lot of them. It was exciting because we believed it would be exciting. George, you say that, and Oscar says that, but Quarte threw more punches. Doesn't the guy who's throwing more punches make the fight more than the guy remember, who's throwing remember more? Remember, when you're throwing a lot of punches and you're hitting a guy's glove, they count those things. Mm -hmm. You count them on an elbow and everything. A lot of those punches were there. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya got the best of that fight, and then he, you're going to take a champion's title from him by getting knocked down in the last round doesn't even make sense. 